should we be worried about Miami down the stretch? You can get the Bills 3-1 to one to still win the division. I would say that I'm not worried about Miami making the postseason. But I think it's a very good point, Bill. This is a really difficult stretch, and especially coming off a game that you should have won. 14-point lead with four minutes to play. I mentioned this stat yesterday. No team has come back from a deficit like that in, what, seven years? Teams before that were 0 and 767. That's how rare a loss like that is, completely deflating. So when you talk about the schedule coming up, even the Jets are not going to be an easy out this weekend. I know it's easy to say, oh, yeah, it's Zach Wilson. He won't have back-to-back good games, but he might. The Jets' defense is very good. It's not a shoe-in. Cowboys, Ravens, Bills. So, yeah, I think if you're the Dolphins coming off a game that you absolutely should have won and you have this gauntlet down the stretch, you're going to make the postseason, but now you have to be worried about playoff positioning and having an advantage that maybe you would have had if you had won this game against Tennessee and maybe put together a couple wins down the stretch. So I would say yes. I think it's actually a solid play and something to actually look at in the betting market. If the Bills are 3-1 to one to win the division, because look at their schedule, and you mentioned this, the Bills are going to be favored in all of these games, with the exception of maybe the Dolphins to close out the year. So say it comes down to the final game of the year, Bills-Dolphins for the division. What did we see last time around when the Bills and the Dolphins squared off? Uh, the Bills won it 48-20. to 20. Should be noted that was a home game for the Bills, but still... You know, clearly the matchup advantage goes to the Bills. So especially at that price, uh, I don't think the Dolphins are going to be favored in all those games, especially when they go on the road to the Ravens. So a great call there. I think I will be on the Bills. But Lucy, I did want to ask you about what feels like the rise and the fall of the Kansas City Chiefs. Because, of course, earlier in the season, we had Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey, you know, dating Taylor Swift. And now we saw the tantrum that Patrick Holmes had a lot of people were hating on him for it, and for good reason. He was acting like a crybaby. Do you think this is it for the Chiefs? Do you think they actually are writing themselves out of the script for winning the Super Bowl this year? I think they might be, because that tantrum, uh, first glance and the hours following. First of all, it's Taylor Swift's birthday, so happy birthday to Taylor Swift. Could we see an engagement? No. I don't know, because they're planning something exciting. Uh, the, just to, to mention, the odds for them to be engaged before the start of the 2024 season are minus 140. And those odds could be a move in today because it is her birthday. Um, but at first glance, that tantrum was off putting and very uncharacteristic of Patrick Mahomes. And you think, what is really going on here? Is he taking this out on the wrong, the wrong outlet in the refs? Or did he want to take it out on Kadarius Tony? But when I look back on it, I don't hate it so much because what we see from Patrick Mahomes all the time is, I, I don't want to say boring, but he's very, um, uh, he's very upstanding and very just like a likable guy. But you see a little bit of, of emotion and color from him and a little bit of, of more zhuzh from him. And I kind of like it. I, I don't, I don't hate it so much as time has gone on because it's something he did, something in the past. But I do look forward to their game against the Patriots and think, is he rattled? Or is this going to fire him up? So what I am looking for is how the Chiefs go forward from this. Because will this be their detriment or will this be what propels them through the season? I don't trust them as a team. I, I refrain from betting on them. I might take the Patriots this week plus nine and a half because I don't know how the Chiefs will show up in this game. It might be a lower scoring game. So maybe the Patriots can cover, but I will be looking to see if, if maybe Patrick Mahomes is now thrown off by this or if it actually helps them. But I'm more on the side of maybe they're thrown off by this and this could be more their demise. I do not think they will make the Super Bowl. The New Mexico Bowl. Oh, yeah. You are. Oh, and Matt just put, I love Jacksonville State. So do I. The New Mexico Bowl, this is a 545 kickoff from Albuquerque, and you've got New Mexico State taking on Fresno State. New Mexico State is laying three and a half points. They're minus 175 on the money line. Fresno State is plus 145. Total set at 51 and a hook. If you have not watched 
New Mexico State quarterback Diego Pavia this year. Do yourself a favor. He's a blast to watch. He's a dual threat. He can do anything. This guy was actually a state wrestling champion in New Mexico. And they're going to have a home field advantage because Las Cruces is about, what, a three-hour and 20-minute drive from Albuquerque where the game is being played. So here I was in high school. I'm trying to win a state competition in pros. This guy was a wrestler, and now he's a tough-as-nails quarterback. I love New Mexico State in this spot, giving the Aggies laying a three-and-a-half. See, I liked New Mexico State against Liberty, and they did not cover against Liberty. But this is mm. a different situation. They are favorites in this one and not getting 10 points. And also, you look at Fresno. They have not been good uh, in any situation over their last three, failing to cover in each of the last three games. And you're right. I watched a little bit of that Liberty in New Mexico State game. Uh, this was a lot of scoring. Uh, 49 to 35 final score. It was actually tied at halftime. So I like this offense, especially with that quarterback. Finally, Matt, I'll throw it in there before we go to break. The New Orleans Bowl, Jacksonville State taking on Louisiana. It's at the Superdome, 215 kickoff on Saturday. Jacksonville State is laying three. They're minus 160 on the money line. Total set at 59 and a hook. Bottom line, you think, oh, this is a home game for Louisiana. They're playing the Dome. All of the money is on Jacksonville State. Like 99% of the money, they're 4-1 and one against the number in their last five. It's a short number. Jacksonville State covers at the Dome. We were talking about some of these totals in the NBA are astronomical. Like tonight's Pacers and Bucks total is 258 and a half. But the way that some of these teams have been scoring, like we were looking at the total for the Hawks and Raptors. And at 240, last year we would have balked at it. But this year it almost seems, you know, run of the mill. What's up with scoring? And at what point are you willing to, you know, continue to ride the over on some of these teams, even with numbers this high? Yeah, I don't. I don't really know what to think of these. I took the under on Pacers Celtics when it was around, I, I want to say like 252, but that was an in-season tournament <laughs> game and that was part of the knockout round. So I figured defense might actually pick up in the fourth quarter. This one tonight against the Bucks, like almost out of principle, I feel like I have to take the under, but I'm not going to play this because I've also taken the the under on on 250 totals with, what was it, the, the Hornets and Wizards earlier this year and got totally Ooh. burned on those. So... I, I, these are just kind of stay away for me because it is crazy. 258 and a half. I, the, the players that played back in the 90s have to just be like out of their minds looking at these totals because we never would have had anything close to this back then. Um, so, yeah, Chelsea, I mean, I don't really understand totally what's gone into it. I mean, pace of play has picked up a lot more mm -hmm. threes. I mean, teams are either scoring at the rim or they're shooting threes. There's not a whole lot of in-between. Um, defense for both of these teams is pretty much optional. So you could you could make a case for it going completely way over. But I also think it's just so high that I almost want to look to the under just be because that number is insane.